Apple is a name everyone knows. Since its inception in 1976, it was mostly known as a company that was keeping up with the pack in computers, but in the late 2000s, Steve Jobs revolutionised the industry and indeed the world with the iPhone, completely changing the way we all communicate. And we are calling it iPhone. Today, today Apple is going to reinvent the phone. It was a decision that has turned Apple into a monolithic and seemingly unstoppable corporation battling for domination. But back during their rise in the 2000s, something happened which really hit this gigantic company hard. It wasn't long term, barely anyone remembers it, but for just 10 minutes, Apple stock tanked. Billions of dollars were temporarily lost and one of the biggest news publications was easily shamed. And it was all down to one prank, saying that Steve Jobs is dead. But before we get into that, are you tired of constantly receiving spam phone calls to the point where you don't even answer your phone anymore? Because I am, all the time. Look, here's all my missed calls. Look, look at all this, man. If you're also going through this, it's evidently clear what's happening. Data brokers are making a fortune selling your information to robocallers, spammers, and others who want to learn more about you, like where you live. Thankfully, there's a solution to this, and that solution is Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura can identify data brokers exposing your information and they can submit opt-out requests on your behalf. Brokers are legally required to remove your information if you ask them to, but they make it really hard to do so. But if you get Aura, it basically handles all of that difficulty for you. Aura also does so much more to protect you and your family from online threats you can't see. It's really easy to set up, so you don't have to download several different apps to get things like parental controls, antivirus, VPN, password management, identity theft insurance, and more. With Aura, you basically get everything in one package at an affordable price. So sit back, and let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online, so you can focus on other tasks with peace of mind. Go to aura.com slash toastify or click the link in the description and you can start your two-week trial today. To understand how this one rumour obliterated Apple stock, you have to understand that Apple basically doesn't exist without Steve Jobs. Sure, that might seem like a pretentious statement, but Steve Jobs' history shows he had nothing short of the Midas touch. In 1976, he was working alongside computer designer Steve Wozniak at Atari, the most dominant home computer company at the time. The two were geniuses who were instrumental in the release of successful games like Breakout, but at the time, Wozniak had also been designing his own computer called the Apple One. Steve Jobs saw it and brought up the idea of selling it, and after selling his Volkswagen band to make the first batch, the company's product was received well in its limited sales. In 1977, Jobs and Wozniak used their funding and debuted the Apple II for public consumers, and it was a hit, being insanely successful. How successful? Well, at age 23, Steve Jobs was worth over a million dollars, but two years later his net worth had boomed to almost 250 million dollars. Flip forward to 1982, and after trying to implement graphic operating systems into Apple's new project, Lisa, Jobs is kicked off the team amidst infighting. Disgruntled, he takes over Apple's Macintosh project and implements his ideas. Two years later, Apple's Macintosh debuted as the first computer that didn't use programming language, and it revolutionised the computer world. Despite his success with Apple Macintosh, he was constantly falling out with Apple CEO John Scully over the direction of the company, and that led to him leaving Apple in 1985. So Steve takes a few Apple engineers with him to found a new computer company called Next, as well as funding the graphics group that broke off from Lucasfilm. The graphics group was then renamed to Pixar, and Steve Jobs becomes executive producer of their first film, Toy Story. It was released in 1995, and again became incredibly successful. Two years later, Apple buys Next, and Jobs returns to Apple, who by then is a decadent company on the verge of bankruptcy. He then takes control and reshakes the company, cancelling several projects and implementing ideas such as the Apple Store website. At the end of his first year, he turned over millions in profits, and a year later, he introduced the iMac, another computer that became incredibly successful and shifted the industry to the future of CDs and eventually USB ports. The rest, as they say, is history. New operating systems, the iPod, the MacBook, and finally the iPhone in 2007, and Apple shot far off into the atmosphere. Steve Jobs had left his company, come back, and turned fortunes around with plenty more to add on. He was incredibly talented and incredibly incredibly important to Apple's image. In some ways, he embodied the company, and that's what made rumours about his death feel so impactful. But before we go into that, we need to know how this rumour was spread. 
I know, I can see it. That wave oh is a good God. 15, 20 feet tall. Easy. Get in, get in, get in! In 2004, an earthquake and tsunami hit the Indian Ocean and devastated countries around it. Seven months later, Islamic extremists would detonate bombs on public transport around London. Both events were tragic, yet a major issue surrounding them for news channels was that pictures of what happened weren't available until much later. Now today, you can see on the ground footage of breaking news everywhere on social media. Just pull up YouTube or Twitter and you'll find it. But we're talking about 2004. YouTube wouldn't be created until a year later, Twitter wouldn't be created until two years later, Later, and Facebook had just been launched and was still obscure. So, to resolve the big issue of having a lack of information, the interns at CNN had a bright idea. Why not make a platform where people from around the globe can contribute pictures and videos of breaking news stories? How about we make it that any ordinary citizen is allowed to submit stories related to news of any sort? In fact, we should encourage it. And no, we shouldn't put any systems in place to edit, fact check, or screen any post by random people. What could go wrong? And so, CNN made iReport in 2008, moulding it from their fan zone program that was used during the World Cup in Germany. The slogan? Unedited, unfiltered, news. And initially, it was a success. Everything from a bridge collapse in Minneapolis to the Virginia Tech shooting were posted on iReport, and made CNN's creation all the more popular. The interns at CNN must have thought they were geniuses, even though iReport was probably made to capitalise off the recent success of Facebook, but that doesn't matter. The real news is finally being reported, even if the citizen journalists don't get paid anything for their contributions, and are forced to relinquish control of who used their work and where their work is shown. But those interns overlooked a very obvious security security floor, and someone would eventually take notice. It's around 4am Pacific Standard Time on the 3rd of October 2008, and as most people are fast asleep, a rumour has just been posted to iReport by the user John TW. It reads as follows, Steve Jobs was rushed to the ER just a few hours ago after suffering a major heart attack. I have an insider who tells me that paramedics were called after Steve claimed to be suffering from severe chest pains and shortness of breath. My source opted to remain anonymous, but he is quite reliable. I haven't seen anything about this anywhere else, and as of right now, I have no further information. So I thought this would be a good place to start. If anyone else has more information, please share it. Only six sentences long, and yet within an hour, this rumour had become pretty popular. It quickly made it to iReport's front page, and around 6.25am, headlines start being published, such as, Apple Steve Jobs rushed to ER after heart attack, says CNN citizen journalist. 6.41am, an Apple stock price began to plummet from $105.25 to $95.41, a difference of around $9 and a stock change of minus 10%. Now that might sound like nothing, but to put it in perspective, back in 2007, a false report about Apple made their stock price go from around $108 to $105. That was a drop of 3% and Apple lost $4 billion at that moment, so a 10% drop is on a whole new level. With their stocks plummeting, Apple spokespersons hurriedly made statements to Insider and Bloomberg, saying it wasn't true, and at 6.57am, their articles would be published clarifying what had happened. Around 20 minutes later, at 7.15am, CNN was alerted and removed the post. With that done, Apple stocks began to recover, but they were still down 3% at the end of the day. A huge loss and a gigantic scare for them. CNN would post this statement later that day iReport.com is an entirely user-generated site where the company is determined by the community. Content that does not comply with community guidelines will be removed. After the content in question was uploaded to iReport.com, the community brought it to our attention. Based on our terms of service that govern user behaviour on iReport.com, the fraudulent content was removed from the site and the user's account was disabled. The US Securities and Exchange Commission is investigating the origin of a false report on a CNN citizen journalist website that Apple Inc. Chief Executive Officer Steve Jobs had a heart attack and was hospitalised. The agency's enforcement unit is trying to determine whether the iReport.com posting was intended to push down the company's stock price. CNN is cooperating with the SEC's probe, and so this incredible event had turned into a hunt by the SEC, and they were trying to find who was behind this hoax, what were their motives. Now it could just be a harmless prank, or it could be a criminal, messing with the stocks, buying low and then selling quickly, getting in and getting out. Could it be a recurrence of the case of Mark Jacob, a 23-year-old college student who posted a fake press release? 
tanking the stock of network company Emulex and making thousands off it. Could John TW have made off with stacks thanks to well created misinformation? Well if he had, that was a big deal for the SEC. Mark Jacobs fake press release made him $240,000, but he was caught and jailed for 44 months, along with all the money being taken away. So the SEC started asking CNN for information on the anonymous poster, and Bloomberg reported that he was supposedly 18 years old. But past that, nothing really happened. People expected them to find John TW through the IP address, but he used an anonymous one to create the account. As it turns out, this was not the first online appearance of the Steve Jobs heart attack post. It actually came up first on Mac Rumors, an Apple related forum, and from there it was only tracked to the image board 4chan. Of course it was. And that was the end of it. John TW, whoever he was, was never caught. He was probably a prankster just posting for fun and chaos, but I like to believe this random 4 channel made off with millions and was laughing his way to the bank. Since then, this rumour has also come up again a fair few times, like in 2009 when a hacker infiltrated Mac rumours and defaced it with messages saying Steve Jobs had died. On another occasion, Bloomberg accidentally put out an obituary article for Steve Jobs, and CBS once falsely reported his death. Even though Apple's drop in stocks was significant, most of it did come back up quickly and nothing was really affected super long term for the big players. Apple eventually recovered from the 3% loss and they learned lessons from this as it was a harrowing reminder of what was to happen soon. Steve Jobs pulled through for three more years, and surprisingly iReport wasn't really affected. They certainly drew a lot of criticism and disgrace, as this wasn't the first time and wouldn't be the last where misinformation was on iReport, but there wasn't really any rule changing or rearranging the system as far as I know. In fact, it only seemed like iReport got bigger. In 2011, CNN held their first award show for iReport with seven categories, and in 2012, they reached more than a million registered iReport members. iReport was only discontinued seven years after the Steve Jobs death post, when the program was moved from direct access on the CNN website in 2015. Now, that website's been replaced by a hashtag through which people can submit news using YouTube, Twitter, or Instagram. And that's the end of the story, as far as anyone knows. So, how important is the story to us today? What relevance does this hold to us, and why did I even decide to cover this obscure slice of media history? I mean, even on its day, this whole thing was overshadowed, as it happened on the same day OJ Simpson was found guilty of charges of kidnapping and armed robbery. No one remembered, and everyone just moved on. But I wanted to talk about this because it's really interesting how just one lie can really affect these mega companies. As I said in the beginning, corporations like Apple, Android, and many more now dominate our entire lives. We use their phones, wear their watches, let them see everything we're doing, it seems like these dominant, overbearing behemoths are impossible to take down. Yet still, the Steve Jobs heart attack rumour is a small and fleeting glimpse showing us that the corporate chokehold still shows signs of weakness. 4chan isn't perfect or even good by any means, but its continuing novelty comes from the fact that it's a remnant of the Wild West era of the internet. It shows us that the common man's most accessible and efficient weapon online isn't hacking or flagging, it's lies. And as we go further and further into a digital age, that fact is a terrifying concept for us to comprehend. Until next time, stay safe and stay toasty.